Now 2020 is finally over. Oh. Now, is 2021 gonna be a better stock year then? Well, I don't know because I don't have my glass ball in front of me. But what I do know is that now is the time to look back. Like, take a look what, you know, what you can possibly expect upcoming, but also what we can and could have done for 2020. Because, hey, what could we have done to get through this year without being beaten up by the stock market all the time like this? You gotta see it like this, you know? It doesn't happen like this all the time and every year again. But in today's video, I wanna show and actually answer the question, how can you and I overcome the bear market the moment we come and get into another one? But before we go into the video, of course, what you need to know is that the stock market does not represent the economy, of course. And yes, I'm sure you've already heard this a million times, but it is true. You can, you know, agree and disagree to it. The economy and the unemployment rate are not directly related to the stock market. So yeah, if the stock market goes up when the economy is not doing so well, well, that, that's even possible. And the other way around, it's also possible. So yeah, it's not directly related to each other. And yes, slightly in a way, it is again. But what you need to know is that when the stock market drops, and not just by a percentage, because that happens actually daily, but if it drops, like for example, like 20% or more, well, that's the moment when you should re, well, that's actually really the moment that you should re-evaluate your strategy. Take a look if actually your strategy is still the way that you want to do it. And if not, adjust it, now you can. Of course, if you stay until the end, I'll even share with you what I tell my students what to do when a bear market pops up. For now, let's get into the video. Hey, what's up you guys? Lucas here from XLWealth.com. Great that you joined in today because in today's video, I actually wanna go through with you, well, you know, like how can you overcome a bear market and especially something like the one that we had in 2020. And of course, what you could have done and what you can do in the future. For now, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, be sure to do that over here. And of course, if you haven't gotten a copy of my book yet, be sure to click the link down below to get your own copy. You know, because who doesn't want to have a copy of my book? Right? You should get a copy of one. Absolutely get one. Click down below. It's currently on special offer even. Okay? I'll see you there. Now, the first thing that I actually want you to know before we go into this whole theory is what is a bear market and what is a bull market? Well, yes, we've got two terms, you know, the bear market and the bull market. But in general, you got, you know, it's a way to measure the stock market. Is that how you say it? Well, you got to say it like this. A bear market is actually in a stock market. You know, when is something a bear market? When the stock market is declining and not just declining like that, but when it is declining with more than 20% from its previous peak. That is what... Investopedia actually tells us. Now, this actually happened back in 2020 in February when the markets fell over 20%. Now, yes, when we take a look at the S&P 500, that even dropped with 34%. And that sounds like, whoa, goodness, that sounds a lot. But you gotta see like this. The other end, we've got something called the bull market. Now, according to Investopedia, of course, a bull market is when the stocks are climbing and yet the same idea from, you know, from the lowest part of the market, when it rises for more than 20% at least, that's the moment we can say, this stock market is currently in a bull market. And yes, so we've got bull markets growing and we've got bear markets falling. Now, the interesting part is the moment we're in either of the markets, the moment we're there, we can't really see what market we're in. And you might be thinking, Lucas, what are you talking about? When you don't know where you are, you already know like, okay, I don't know if this is good or bad. So, but before you actually know that where you are, you need to take a look around, where do we stand? And that's the whole case, because, you know, the moment you're in something, the moment you're in the heat of a battle, you can't say like, uh, you know what, stop beating me right now, I need to take a look how many bruises I have on my body. That doesn't work like that. 
Because the moment you're in the heat of a fight, the moment you're in the middle of a bear market or a bull market, the moment you are in one, you, you can't really see what's happening. That same, you know, same concept goes to a fight. The moment you're in the middle of a fight, you can't really say like, how many minutes have passed? Let me take a look at the clock. You can't really say that. This is why it's so important to take a step backwards. And in the coaching, they call that chunking up. You got to take a step backwards and then see, okay, where are we right now? And that is actually the next point for this video. Now, the next point is, of course, you need to know where do you stand? Like in the previous point, you can't tell where you are when you're in the middle of a fight, when you're in the middle of a certain market. This is like, you know, if you're not fighting, as you know, if you're in a dark room where you can't see light or anything, as long as you just stay there, nothing will happen. But the moment you start moving around, you can either bump your face into a door and I say, Ooh, this is a door that I could open. This is how it just works. The moment you start moving in the stock market, then you'll see a difference. As long as you don't move on a stock market, you know, they, there's a reason why they call buy, sell, and hold. The moment you hold, the moment you don't do a thing, well, nothing really happens. And that is the whole case of the stock market. This is why you can always say in the stock market, I'm either going to buy more, I'm either going to sell it right now because I'm shitting my pants or I think this is not going to happen. Or you could say, you know what, it is as it is and I'm just going to hold on to it. Okay, so when we go back to the mid, to, you know, the mid February 2020, when the market was at its peak, the moment people started selling their stocks each day, every hour, each minute that passed by, you got the choice. Should I buy more? Should I sell my stocks? Or should I hold on to the stocks right now? That was the choice that you got every minute, every hour, every day again. And yes, you know, we were at the peak. But the moment it dropped slightly, you were like, goodness, I just saw the stocks drop slightly. What should I do? Should I just ignore the stocks, you know, the stocks and just say, you know what, I'll just hold on to it. This process continues each and every day. A every day again, because it's being valued all the time. Now, the thing is, what should you do? What should you do? You know, you couldn't tell if you were in a bear or bull market. The only thing that I could see what you are thinking right now is like, yeah, but Lucas, when you take a look back, I could see from yesterday to today, the market actually fell with 5%. Well, you know, you got to see it like this. So the first 10 days after the first sell-off, which is, you know, at the end of February, of course, the market reached its first breathing moment. That was the moment we can actually say, you know what? Ooh, you know, is the bear market, you know, stopping right now? Or is that the bouncing ball, you know? Was that the time to buy again? And if you didn't yet, well, you know, you had to think about it. And you had to make a choice back then. So right now, looking back, it is very easy to say, ooh, I should have bought 10 days after, and then the price would rise again and then sell off again. But that's the fact, you know, that's the fact that we face every time again. Should we buy? Should we sell? Should we hold? You know, I know that I bought shell stocks. I bought them at the lowest point of the market and I sold them later on the moment, you know, the market actually bounced off. I actually did that. And yes, it was very scary because, you know, I put $10,000 in and it was shitting my pants at some times. <laughs> but yes, I made over 6 k just in a few days time. I did. But yeah, you know what? That's really called gambling. And in this case, if you want to overcome a bear market, I don't know if gambling is the best choice to make. So when we take a look at the S&P 500, and especially in the time, you know, the, when the bear market was active, which is like somewhere around 20th of 19 February until the 23rd of March when the, you know, the, the deepest point was actually reached. That was actually the bear market. And in hindsight, yes, we can conclude that was a bear market. And yes, it only took about a month time. So yeah, the word already says it. It's in hindsight. And we conclude, meaning it has already passed, we can conclude we're either in a bear market or in a bull market. 
And that is something that I would like to discuss in the next point. Now, the next point that I actually want to discuss with you is what can you do to overcome the bear market? Because in the end, you and I, we can't really do much. It's not that we say, let's change the stock market. It's not going to change anything because, you know, in the end, you got to think and see it like this. The bear market will end and the bull market will start because it always goes up and down. Because did you know that this bear market of 2020 was actually the shortest bear market in history ever? And you really got to see it like this because it only took about one month time, like a little bit more than a month. And when you compare this in the history of all bear markets altogether, we actually had another, we actually had a few short bear markets. You know, that was one in the 1990s. We had the Gulf War activities, you know, and that one only lasted like about three months time. And there was another one that was just over three months, which was in 1987, I think, which was the Black Monday crash, you know, that all the markets crashed all of a sudden because of that, also all of the computers. You know, that is when we take a look at the history. But you got to think of this. These short bear markets weren't actually really hard hitters. Because take a look at this year. The moment we take a look at this year of 2020, this I'm actually talking about the previous year. This year as in the the you know the the, the bear market year. 2020, February, we had a crash of 34% in the S&P 500. That was a big drop. Yes, it is. But it wasn't the biggest that we had in the, you know, in the history. The biggest was, yes, in 1929, the Great Depression that had over 86% of losses. 86%! And then the moment the second one was, actually the next one actually after, just a few years after, was 1937 was caused by the recession that caused the loss of 60%. 60%! 60%! We're only talking about 34 right now. And then, of course, we had the third biggest stock market loss that was back in 2007 or 7, 2008 that we had, you know, the housing bubble pop, the financial crisis. And back then we had a loss of 56%. So in the end, when we actually really think about it, the current 34% of loss on the stock market, it wasn't actually that huge compared to the one that we had, you know, back in the past. But yes, a loss of the market is always bad. And yes, you got to see it like this, some bear markets end faster, some end slower. On, you know, in general, we've seen in a hundred years time, we see that in general, the, you know, overall, the bear markets actually last about 11 months. And this one actually took only one month. So yes, this one strikes less hard compared to the longer ones. But in the end, for you and me, the most important thing is applying your own strategy and sticking to it is the most important thing. But you got to see it like this, even in times like a bear market, the stocks can be at an all time low. The thing is, what does your strategy actually tell you to do in such a situation? It is so important to know what you should be doing in such a situation, because if you don't know, if you don't have an emergency plan, if you don't have an exit route, then it's mainly just sitting ducks. You're sitting there waiting for things to happen. And this is what I would like to discuss with you in the next point. And of course, one of the bonus things that I actually want to discuss with you is, yes, what can you now really do to overcome the bear market, right? Now, in my strategy, what I always teach my students is evaluate your strategy. You've got the main lines laid out. You know what the red guidelines are. You know how you actually, pref you know, you actually know how your stocks perform. It is up to you to take a look what to do with it the moment the stock drops. Like this year, you can take a look, you know, stocks like Amazon, despite the actual crisis, they actually rose immensely because everyone was at home ordering stuff. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yes, but not only that, I'm no, if, if you're a business just like mine, you know, I've got a coaching business, and, and we've got real estate business. The thing is, the moment you got to sign stuff, there's a company called DocuSign Inc. In the beginning of 2020, they actually trade their shares for around $80 per share. Now, currently, they've gone over the top several times, and currently, each share is being traded for over 200, 
240 dollars i think just because everybody needs to have official documents signed using docusign's method and and their you know their, their water marking saying it's a real thing this is why it's so important for you to actually say like you know what we got to reevaluate the strategy and say what does the strategy tell us are we still buying into the right ones are we still doing a good thing if you are then it's totally fine to hold on to your stocks and i'll tell you this there will always be companies that will benefit from each and every situation and no there's not one company that will always be safe from any stock market crashes this is why it's your job to take a look around to take a look around where do you stand and which companies will make you money over time the moment you buy into the stocks now since you stayed until the end i've got one more bonus that i would like to share with you and that is called stock hunting now i don't know about you but the moment i'm bored and i have some time left i always go out and go hunt now I'm not hunting for ladies, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but I'm stock hunting. Hunting for stocks that are on sale because yes, during a stock market crash, there are things on sale. And yet we're not saying they're gonna go bankrupt, but they're on sale that can still perform well. So like, you know, the intrinsic value of the certain company is doing totally fine. The thing is they're being struck by the crisis just as hard as everyone else. This is why they're actually on sale. You can actually help them out. You can help them out in the current crisis there are. So, you know, start investing your money in their companies and they will give you money back. And for example, you could go hunt for some nice dividend stocks. If you take a look at McDonald's, for example, they're actually trading at a nice price. But the thing is, they're actually, you know, they got a dividend share. They got a dividend payout of 2.4%. Not a bad idea. Texas Instruments, just like that, 3.4% not a bad deal if you actually want to get some nice money buy 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 the moment the market is low and that is actually the best idea and the best advice that i like to do and spend my spare time when i think i'm actually bored what should i do now go hunt and this is what i wanted to share with you today if you of course like the video be sure to smash that like button because smashing the like button will make a blue and the moment you make a blue youtube will say hey lucas you got a great video we got to show some more people this great video and of course if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet be sure to hit that subscribe button because that's the way how we can grow our community together because you know the more people watch these videos the more people enjoy the content like this and yes we can make greater content with greater videos just like these and if you want to be notified be sure to click the notification bell as well because that's the way how youtube tells you luke has got a new video be sure to check it out now <laughs> and of course if you haven't checked out my latest book yet be sure to get your own copy down below in the description because hey currently my ebook is on special offer i thank you very much for watching today's video i like you being here around and that sounded a bit weird, but that's totally fine. And I'll see you on the next video. Happy investing and bye-bye.